and composite. Mm -hmm. So now we've been talking about a lot of uh, functionalities, functionalities right in, in the product, mm -hmm. for which you don't need to write any code. It's just a configuration or a setup. Mm -hmm. So there will be some kind of, uh, some requirements where you 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 wouldn't need to. I mean, there could be some complex requirements for which you wouldn't even need to write the code. If you think of all the features that I talked about, for example, mm -hmm. uh, for example, let's take the BCS. So that's again a feature in SharePoint 2010, which wasn't in the old versions. So mm -hmm. my requirement is to uh, connect the 2010, you know, my SharePoint server with my legacy systems. So uh -huh. now that I bought my SharePoint product, so I don't want users going back to my legacy systems because I want to centralize my system completely in the organization. So I want users to access those legacy systems within the SharePoint itself. Mm -hmm. So I can just duplicate my old versions, I mean old systems. Mm -hmm. So how do we now integrate our legacy system with SharePoint? That's when the PCS comes into the picture. Okay. It's not. It's a. It's a feature, but it's not a. You know, right? It's not a one-click every feature. You have to do a lot of configuration okay. to to actually connect to your SQL and pull the data. And you can define what data needs to be pulled, what operations you can do it, and finally, mm -hmm. the data will be presented in SharePoint look and feel with all the with all the metadata and content type concepts used. Mm -hmm. So, so composite is something. The feature talks about the the complexity, and the feature also talks about. Uh, it's not something that uh, an admin, or maybe an end user, or maybe a site collection administrator can do it. But definitely, it's a little complica complicated configuration, which a developer or a professional can only do it. Well, but okay. still, doesn't require any core for this. Oh, okay. Like so if, you, if you take if you take your workflows, so mm -hmm. workflow is a feature that you know you you have it in .NET, but you need to write a lot of code. So in SharePoint, it's already in there, but you have to do a lot of configuration for it to make it work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, worries. I'm just wondering, like, see, uh, as you said, like initially with sites you have lots of templates. I guess for these things also you must be having some wizards or templates, which uh, does an initial task and then you can configure a bit later. Because I'm sure, like, when when it has a uh, for the rest of the things, even this. Uh, 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 compo uh, composers also must be having some uh, wizards or templates, I guess. Yeah, so like this, yeah, I mean, it's it's a wizard for sure. So the the business connectivity service mm -hmm. or the workflows, they do have their wizards, of course. But it's not a simple three, four steps, that's what I'm saying. So it needs a lot okay. of <laughs> configuration, and you have to know a lot of values to configure that particular service or feature. Mm -hmm. If you if you talk okay. about if you compare uh, the site creation and uh, this particular business connectivity service, mm -hmm. so site creation is just you provide the values which you already know, like the site name, what should be the name of it, and what will mm -hmm. be the URL for it. That's it, okay. and you choose the template that you want. Just three fields you enter, and then the site is there. But for mm -hmm. business connectivity service you want to set up, you have to know the SQL. Database name, and you have to make sure that your SharePoint server have enough rights on that particular server or database, and then okay. you have to you have the SQL connector or whatever mm -hmm. the you know exact connector. If you're connecting to a different database which is not SQL, maybe something else, you have to have that particular compatible connector to connect to that database from SharePoint. Mm -hmm. And then you have to make sure that there are enough rights to run this particular service on SharePoint. Mm -hmm. And then you have to know the user account, 
and make sure that particular user account that is running this service has access to that particular server. So there are a lot, a lot of stuff like that. And it's not just over because you have to, again, pull the data and make sure that particular tables or the columns match here. You have to configure that again here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, this, uh, this service was there in 2007 named with the name BDC, Business Data Catalog. Okay. Yeah, but that was pretty, uh, for pretty much for read access, you can't do anything. You can just read the data, that's it. But here you can mm -hmm. do a lot more than that. You can do all those crude operations in 2010. You don't have to write the code. But in 2007, mm -hmm. you know, every project trying to use the BDC, you know, BDC, they write a lot of code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which which is pretty much eliminated here. Okay, so what about like uh, see uh, if a, if the legacy system is not a .NET based system, like say a PHP application or something, can I still go ahead and do configuration with those sites? Okay, so there are uh, definitely uh, some kind of limitations with SharePoint how it can be integrated with uh, all the legacy systems. So mm -hmm. if we are talking about the database, you can always connect with the database as, I mean, like if it's compatible. If it's not, you have to write your own connector mm -hmm. so that it can connect to that particular database. And I believe there are some third party who do sell the .NET connectors for those lazy database or systems. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much. No problem. Okay, so that's about all those that I explained already. So that's all the circle, yeah. And uh, as you see that, you know, SharePoint uh, tried to change the, or I would say stand, try to standardize the look and feel by mm -hmm. introducing the ribbon. If you observe the office progress, you would see this. Uh, Ribbon, yeah, type yeah. of interface. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to make the, you know, mimic the same thing everywhere in SharePoint as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's pretty much explained. Just I gave the screen so. So this is how right. my site looked like, you know, with all this organization chart and, uh, you know. The, the activities that they have been doing. Yeah. So you can even go to their My Profile and, my profile and see what they are in the organization and how they're related and their information, their activities, all that. You know, when I say activities, activities through SharePoint. Of course, okay. you don't have a camera on them to act. To act right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Right, uh, so, by the way, would it make a, yeah. a further uh, the user to have their own my site, and there must be a, lots of uh, permission issues with, uh, which has to be handled through SharePoint, right? Okay, so when so the biggest thing when you come from .NET to SharePoint, the biggest thing is that you will not touch your database. You don't do anything in database. You will forget what database is. Ah. Yeah, seriously. Okay. Because okay. even when you write the code, you will never write a connection. You will never say SQL command. Oh, okay. It's, it's always it's always played with the SharePoint object. So, like you in .NET, you have a lot of you know .NET framework. So it has API. It got a lot of controls, components. Mm -hmm. So similarly, SharePoint has its own framework, and then it has its own object. So each object itself handles internally with the database. You will not write any database code. Okay. So, so it allows you to yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Um, it allows you to change your UI at least, right? Of course, it does. I mean, okay. So now I've been telling you what SharePoint has already given then why do we actually have SharePoint projects with a lot of development in it? Because every client has their own requirements and they want to change the look and feel of it or maybe something is not already in SharePoint. 
but mm-hmm. you know not not the way they wanted but it's already in there so uh, yes that is when sharepoint projects get created and planned and then we write you know the code like this in visual studio to change the ui you know sharepoint does have limitations like you know it it cannot bring the content aggregator it has its own as site site structure so content structure so you cannot bring the content together the way the client need, needs it so then we write a lot of web parts a lot of code with the net so uh, you know to bring all the data together with the uh, with with uh, the metadata that is actually needed instead of bringing all the metadata and uh, the presentation again changes where you know the ui changes and you want some fancy look at, look look with ajax kind of a yeah that's what i was coming to right and i mean you can do all all of that yeah okay and uh, when you talk about the web it allows you to access the metadata so um, this way like a uh, metadata is like a you you access uh, you accessing something which has to do with sql or connection like that I mean, how does it expose the metadata okay so what it does is so metadata is always and you know it's like a column here even in sharepoint we call it as a column here or columns are again different types which we'll talk in further sessions but yes yeah, so how does it handle so when we use that wizard to connect with the xml systems it pulls mm-hmm. the data it reads all the data that we trying to we map it with the wizard and it creates all those objects okay sharepoint objects which is actually pretty much same in the sql so like i said you know list with columns in sharepoint is pretty much similar with a table with columns in the database mm-hmm. but the object types are different that's it the look and feel is different that's it so okay. when you just use this wizard and configure it it creates all those sharepoint objects pretty similar to those sql objects that's it okay. and it tries to sync the data so let's like i have couple of questions before we complete sure go ahead so as i said like you don't touch the sql server at all then mm-hmm. what's the task of what's the task of administrators like they just configure it or okay so uh, when you come to uh, administration yes i mean so the configuration so when we set up or install any sharepoint server it does need a database server you know where will it store the things it need to have a sql server so they will set up the sql server and and uh, i mean we actually administrators run the partial script they don't go to sql server or manually create the database they don't do that so mm-hmm. they script uh, so that it will the partial scripts will actually create all those content database config database whatever in the sql server and uh, all those permissions need to be set up again in sql it's not just mm-hmm. that you set up the permissions in sharepoint it's all good no it's not you have to set up all those permissions in sql as well and create all those databases and uh, performance tuning if it's really necessary which is actually not needed in sharepoint which is pretty much rare because you always do the tuning from the sharepoint perspective which will definitely mm-hmm. tune the back end because mm-hmm. It's the data is going from your SharePoint, so you tune here, it's tuned there. Right. Yeah. So when you go to SharePoint administration, it's not much of the SQL administration that they do, but SharePoint. How SharePoint integrates with SQL? I mean, if if we talk about different products, SharePoint administration includes the share doing the things within SharePoint and mm-hmm. doing the things with the products that are integrated with SharePoint, like SQL. AD or maybe LDAP or some other mm-hmm. third party products that are integrated with SharePoint you know that okay. comes in picture okay so they are just um, it has the features of lots of products like see, I, I can imagine when you explain this i can imagine my old access days of the development when yeah it uh, it's just a uh, enhancement of all these features document management and 
database development like though you are not doing straight away i mean it has a options to do it at the front end and yeah so if you're talking about uh, the how the sharepoint products are or yeah, yeah yeah so yeah i mean we do a lot of stuff there so it's not just like an enhancement we do those things from scratch like you know dot net you have a dotted control but you cannot see it you have I mean, what you see is only the adopted API, but in SharePoint you do see the default uh, controls, right? Mm -hmm. So in SharePoint you do mm -hmm. see the default given controls by Microsoft. But mm -hmm. if the if if the client wants something different, something different which is not already in the SharePoint, so then we will build it from scratch, or we may build it, uh, or we may actually enhance that's default ones. So it's all again technical strands. Okay. Cool. Thanks so much for that. No problem. So any more questions before we close for today? Yeah, I mean, uh, then we learned about the training. Um, about, uh, I just wanted to ask, like, um, what would be the actual job profile of a SharePoint consultant? If you to, um, I think you broke. Can you repeat that? What should be the actual job profile of a SharePoint consultant? What, okay. what are you interested to? Oh, well, you're talking about consultant, or you're talking about developer? I mean, consultant. Yeah, I'm already a consultant. Uh, yeah. Yes, okay. so SharePoint consultant is, I mean, it depends from their geography, you know, location to location, and how they deal with the, the they still tax SharePoint consultant, but you, you might be doing a developer. It all depends again on the client requirement. But in general, when, it, when, you say, when anyone say consultant, they are actually in development. They are also a strategic uh, guy from a SharePoint background. So they okay. will give you a, you know, it's like much handled than just a developer, just being a developer. Okay. So if I if I say you just trained and then you want to be consultant, I would I would say it's very difficult. Uh, but you know if I say if I just got uh, trained and then uh, maybe one year I just been doing development. So when I am doing development, someone will actually help me on the bigger strategies how a, how a component can be developed. So I I was given a requirement. Then what happens is. I don't know how to do it. I don't know which part of SharePoint object should I use it. There could mm -hmm. be multiple ways to do it, but I don't know the best one unless mm -hmm. you already did implement all of the best approaches. Okay. So, so it, uh, yeah, it it just comes through practice, I guess. But then, yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, uh, after the training, you can you can become a uh, administrator or a or a developer, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, so if you are a developer, you, you know, you pretty much know the configuration, so you can even want change it to administrator. But you have to know a little bit more with the, you know, how you can configure it. But you can always play with it. Once you have the SharePoint server, you just go it with an it and just keep clicking every link. That's it. You know SharePoint. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Right. I mean, yeah. if you are an administrator already, and if you want on the development, it's very difficult because you don't have the programming background, and uh, and uh, it's the API, and you know, it's a little different to be a mm. developer from an administrative background. Yeah, uh, you can always go vice versa. Okay. Cool. Cool. Thank you so very much. This is a help for initial class. No problem. No questions. You're welcome. Then I'm sure, like, I'm sure, like, a. Uh, it will be difficult being a .dot net uh, guy to grasp the concepts of SharePoint. I guess. Not at all. Not at all. Cool. That's good. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty much happy because you know uh, uh, when uh, I mean I've been training a lot of guys there, so people do come with uh, no programming background. So I have to even teach you know one or two classes with Whoops concepts. Otherwise, it will be difficult for them to pick it up. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so it's pretty much makes easy for me. So we can uh, go in detail when we get into the sessions. Yeah. Oh, cool. That sounds good. Yeah. Well, thank you so very much, Minas.